Welcome to the next video in my series on, well, it started as Fat Shark Diversity Modules, but then I got offered the clear view and I couldn't say no to that. And then the Hobby King Overlord is in there and I guess it's Fat Shark Diversity Modules and ground stations and anything that receives an FPV signal. So far in this series, I've looked at the LaForge, I've looked at the True D from Furious FPV, the Real ACC. If you wanna look at any of them, I got a link to the playlist down in the video description. Today, we're looking at the Two Pineapples module from Flying Lemon. One thing that immediately differentiates the two pineapples module from the others that uh, we've been looking at is that it doesn't have an OLED display on the outside. And one effect of that is that it makes for a really light and trim, uh, clean install. In fact, it's barely any bigger, it's really not any bigger than the standard Nextwave module that comes in the goggles. And if we pop this door off, this uh, this is a 3D printed door. It comes with the Flying Lemon. It's uh, You can kind of see the striations in the, from the 3D printing, uh, but overall the quality is pretty good. It's got very fine details. Uh, it's not quite as good looking as if it was injected molded, but it's it's not a, like just a, oh, a cheap chintzy 3D printed part. It's pretty quality. And you can see here inside, don't mind this wire here, that's for my the Forge Diversity Module, we'll pretend that doesn't exist. Uh, you can see here, th there's the module itself, and it's basically not any bigger than the standard Nextwave module. So if there's no screen and no buttons on the module, then how do you interact with it? And the answer is that you reuse buttons that are already on the goggles. And at first that sounds like a great idea, but there's actually some complications that come with it. Uh, so it turns out that the only buttons that the goggles actually pass through to the module are the channel up and channel down buttons. So you might think, well, I'm just gonna use this joystick. I'm gonna go up, down the menus, left, right to select options, can't do it. The module has no way of reading this joystick. The only thing we have are the up and down buttons. And that means that using the menus gets a little annoying. Let me show you what I mean. So in order to get into the menu, I have to do a special keystroke. And the reason for that is that we don't wanna accidentally enter the menu when what we mean to do is change channels. And the special keystroke to get into the menu is you go channel down, up, 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 really fast. And then, no, I guess I didn't do it. Hold on. Down, up, up, up. There we go. Now I'm in the menu. Okay, so immediately you start to see some of the annoyance of actually using these on a day-to-day -day basis. Every time you want to go into the menu, you have to go down, up, up, up. And you get pretty good at it, although as you see, even with practice, sometimes you flub it. But it doesn't end there. The goggles don't pass up, down keystrokes to the module. The goggles are set up to let you select between eight channels. And when you press the up, down button, what they actually send is the channel that you're supposed to be on, channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which means that there's no ability to like roll over a menu. You can't go in a menu up, 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 and then back around to the bottom. You have to have eight positions in the menu, and each time you choose an option, you're selecting one of those eight positions, which means that in, here in the goggles, if I go down, 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 oh, wait, I wanted to do auto scan. Mm, too bad, I only option is to exit out. You see, down is choose and up is apply. So the only option is to exit out and now go back in, down, up, 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 up. Up, up, there we go, I flubbed it a little. Now I'm back in the menu. Th this continues throughout the use of the goggles. So let's say, I'm, let's go look at the bands that the goggles support. So I'll go down and then up to select. Uh, oh, it thinks I'm, there we go, there we go. Okay, so now I have the choice of boss cam, A, B, E, Fat Shark, Race Band, Low Band, or IMD6. Now this is pretty cool that they support IMD6 out of the box. IMD6 is a set of channels that minimizes something called intermodulation distortion. I'm going to have a video about intermodulation distortion coming up on the channel in a couple of weeks. Suffice it to say, it's it's a set of channels that are designed to work really well together, similar to how race band was designed. Uh, so it's cool that the goggles support that. So let's say I want to go down. Uh, yeah. Oh, let, oh, oh, wait. No, I wanted to select race band. Too bad. I can't. How do I do it? How do I get out of this menu? I, I don't know. I, it seems like I have to select IMD6, which I don't really want to select, but I don't see any other way to get out of the menu. See? So I have to hit up, 
And now I'm in IMD6. Okay, there we go. Am I in the menu? No, one, two, there we go. So now I have to go to set band. Okay, and then fat shark. That's where I want to be. And by the way, I don't know if you've caught, but as I'm pressing down, up, up, up to get into the menu, I'm changing the channel that I'm on. I don't come back to the same channel at the end. So after you've done all this fiddling about in the menu, then you have to go back. You have to put yourself back on your channel. All right, fine. Okay. There we go. I went straight in this time. Let's see what else is on here. I can set the band, auto scan. That puts me in auto scan mode. Now I'm not actually going to find anything. I don't have a transmitter at the moment, but I'll auto scan through looking for any channel with good RSSI. I don't have one, so. Okay, there we go. I'm in the menu. Um, auto scan spectrum analysis. Now this is pretty sexy, isn't it? Yeah, so now we can see that transmitter on there and we can see what channel it's on. We go back into the menu, down, up, up, up. That's spectrum, and then we got settings. So, and that's for calibration, set RSSI min, set RSSI max, and that's pretty much it. So there's your feature walkthrough of these goggles. Now I've got a video coming out showing the RF performance of these goggles, and I'm going to compare it to the RF performance of the other modules I've tested. But I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a heads up. The RF performance of this module is very good. It achieved better range than, uh, it was kind of on par with even the, the Overlord, which had 14 dBi antennas. So the RF performance and the diversity switching is quite good. I'm gonna give you another video with the, the raw footage and you can decide for yourself, you can compare it and contrast. But the overall usability, I have to say, when I first heard about, oh, that uses the OSD, of course, isn't that wonderful? But it's so freaking annoying that you only have two buttons to access with and you it's down up 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 down down up it's doing a freaking it's ridiculous it's kind of ridiculous and i'm not sure i would want to live with that on a day-to-day -day basis frankly i'm not sure i'd want to live with it because if you see guys who've had their goggles for a long time these little cover wears out and cracks i don't know if i want to be pushing this button 57 times a day you know after a few months of that i think it's going to break well, maybe i'm just being neurotic Another thing that I think is really relevant about this module is that like some of the other ones I've complained about, it doesn't have a favorite channel set function. There's no ability for you to decide that you want to have uh, 5740, 5800, 5860, uh, and 5965 as your favorite channels that you use at your flight club or that most of your copters use, and, uh, and then you're just going to flip between them. You have to choose one of the predefined channel sets. It is very nice that they have race band and IMD, uh, IMD6, IMD5 already in there, but if you want to use any custom channel set, it's not an option. Some people have said they don't care about that. Personally, that, that, that is a feature I would really like. Whether this is the right module for you is going to depend on how much you care about the fact that it is a very light and clean and, and nice install, how much you don't like the fiddling about with the buttons, are you going to do that a lot on a day-to-day -day basis? Maybe not. Maybe you're not going to do it that often. But I can't tell you how many times somebody has said, I don't know what channel my transmitter's on. I can't figure out the dip switches. And I just pull out my LaForge or my Trudy and boop, 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 with a few presses of the button. There I am. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the spectrum analysis of what channel they're on. And having to do that with the Flying Lemon uh, Two Pineapples is going to be kind of annoying. On the other hand, if you're the kind of pilot who just sticks your goggles on your face and goes and flies most of the time, well, you're never going to really see that. And switching channels is easy, just to up, 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 down, down, down within the band. So so there you go. There is the Flying Lemon 2 Pineapples module. Good RF performance, good uh, installation cleanliness and aesthetics, horrible user interface, decent price. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.